Hi, everybody. Welcome to Ask Dr. David. I'm Dr. David Berger. Today, we're going to be talking about Delta variant. As I have said before, my thoughts, which are independent, are constantly evolving. And as more information comes out, I will certainly amend my viewpoints accordingly. So what I'm saying today and sharing with you may not be what I feel a week or a month from now, but this is where I am as of today. So Shari is again joining us today. Shari, how you doing? I'm great. Thanks so much for having me. I'm going to dig right in with asking some of the questions that are being presented to our staff at the office right now. Some of the common questions. The first one has to do with why are there so many breakthrough cases? We were told that the vaccines were going to you know, be so successful at fighting against coronavirus, against COVID-19, um, and that breakthrough cases would be so rare. And yet, as everybody is now starting to see, they are not rare. They are actually becoming incredibly common, both in the private and public sphere. People are seeing that happen now on the news. Um, so can you talk about why, why is this? Does this mean that the vaccines aren't working? What is this about? Okay, so there's a, quite a bit there. So first of all, it should be understood that even when the vaccine first came available with the data, they were talking about having 95% efficacy, which means even back then, there were 5% of cases that were having breakthroughs. OK, now, one of the unfortunate things that the CDC did was they decided back in the spring that they would only refer to as breakthrough infections as those who were hospitalized or for people who died. And so for the entire summer, we really had no idea as to how common breakthrough infections were becoming with the Delta variant because they were still only reporting that. And even we still now hear about that. These are relatively rare. These are rare breakthroughs. But anybody who's been looking around, again, you hear about it over and over again. And you typically you don't hear about things over and over again when they're rare, but they're happening right now. You know, we are seeing a difference that a lot of the most people, you know, there does seem to be a difference between those who are catching the disease who have had fully vaccinated before versus those who um, did not have any immunity in terms of the severity as to how sick that they're getting. But 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 it's not a rare thing now that people are getting are are are, are getting the virus even though they've received vaccines, and a lot of this has to do with the fact of how contagious. And how the um and how the viral load of the Delta variant is. So there's just so much more of it around, not just in society, but in the individuals who may be hanging out with other people who they may be hanging out with, or even the sheer number of viral particles that are getting into their body seems to be overwhelming the amount of antibodies that a person has. Now, one of the things we also know, and this seems to be true, whether a person had prior COVID or whether they had the vaccine, is that over time, the antibody levels seem to be fading. So the antibodies need to be there to coat the spike protein in a, in a, in a successful enough way that that spike protein cannot hit the ACE receptors of our cells that allows it for entry into the cells. So if we're only able to coat some of those, those spike proteins, then there's more spike proteins available to allow for access and therefore people are getting sick. So there's both the combination of that there's some waning immunity going out there, along with a more aggressive, more contagious, contagious disease that is what we're seeing of Delta, which is almost 100 percent of what we're seeing in a country right now. Right. And, I, and, and just to reiterate something you said that I think is very important. Um, if you were still thinking about how the CDC defined breakthrough cases, meaning you're fully vaccinated or you had immunity naturally or whatever, although the CDC was really specifically talking about vaccination with breakthrough. Um, if you're really talking about fully vaccinated people who uh, contract the disease and end up either in the hospital or dying, that is still incredibly rare, right? Fully vaccinated people ending up in the hospital. But, and, and that's what the CDC meant when they said breakthrough. But of course, to the common people in the common vernacular, breakthrough just meant, why am I testing positive? Or why is my friend testing positive if they're vaccinated? Um, so I just kind of wanted to go back to that again. And so part of it is actually just the way the CDC put this out and how this term kind of started proliferating through our culture. Now, one of the things that I want to ask you about is children. The Delta variant is circulating and seems to be affecting children very differently than uh, previous variants of this virus. So can you talk about that as to whether or not um, the Delta variant is more is actually more dangerous for children um, or is there some other thing that's going on? Yeah, absolutely. So this has certainly been a change. OK, now 
I know that there's part of the conversation that more that there's a higher percentage of children in hospitals now than before. And of course, that does make sense because if if people who have immunity who are senior citizens or who are high risk but they have immunity, then of course there's less likely of a chance that they're going to be hospitalized. And of course, things need to add up to 100%. So for people who have do not have immunity, they're going to be the people who are going to more end up in the hospital. But this is also different. The sheer number of children who are filling ICUs and who are on ventilators is so much higher than it was last year. So this virus has changed and it has become more dangerous for children. Still, the overwhelming number of children who catch COVID, it's still going to be something mild for them. OK, but we don't have the um, the the level of protection for for kids. They just seem to be getting sicker. Now, of course, in our practice, we do spend so much of our times optimizing the immune systems of our patients. And we don't just put people on zinc and vitamin D. We check their levels. We make sure that they and we really try to get them to the middle of the reference ranges that are provided by the laboratories in order to give them good protection. There were studies that came out last year that showed having adequate vitamin D levels above 50 nanograms per milliliter, having good intracellular zinc levels made a significant impact on the ability of the virus. And this isn't just for COVID. This is for lots of other viruses and what we've been saying and seeing in our practice for all of these years that there seems to be a very good protective level that this that that this is able to get that these nutrients are able to give people so of course when people are eating more inflammatory foods high sugar diets high processed diets less amounts of whole foods of of uh, of you know get, having good intestinal flora the microbiome all of these things are so incredibly important in how our immune systems react to infections OK, and so this is so much more about the do you have immunity right now? This is also about how healthy can you have your body so that if you do get exposed to the virus, that you have the best protection, whether you have the vaccine and it's a reinfection, a second infection of, of, of a person who had already a person who's getting exposed for the first time. Obviously, children who are under the age of 12, they've either had it or they don't have immunity. So we want to make sure that an important part of all of this is that people are having as strong an immune system. We have our immune support protocol, our COVID protocols that we recommend giving it to our, as part of our patients um, information that they can take if they start to get sick to try to mediate, to mitigate how severe that things get. And we've had very good success with that. All right. Well, you know, that's certainly a lot of information and we're going to keep putting out these videos in as, as, as questions come in and as we get information, um, please do subscribe to this channel so you can continue to follow Dr. David, uh, check out our links below and we look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks, Dr. David. Thanks. Have a good day, everybody.